A Republican congressman from Pennsylvania facing new scrutiny for his alleged role in Donald Trump's plot to overturn the election and in helping to fuel the January 6th Capitol insurrection. CNN Sarah Murray is joining us live. She has been covering this. Uh, what's going on here? Well, look, Scott Perry is a little known congressman, but he was a fierce ally to Donald Trump, particularly at a time when it really mattered to the former president when he was trying to overturn the 2020 election results. As a Pennsylvania congressman trumpeted baseless claims of election fraud. Oftentimes they say, well, there's not enough to overturn the election. First of all, we don't know how much there is. Donald Trump was lapping them up. The president was saying that these local officials, or I guess in Scott Perry's case, a federal official, had all kinds of information about all kinds of fraud and problems and things that had impacted the election. Former Associate Deputy Attorney General Richard Donahue told the Senate Judiciary Committee. Now the five-term congressman and Army veteran is facing scrutiny as new details emerge about his role in Trump's plot to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. Scott Perry of Pennsylvania. Scott, thank you. Perry has said he's unaware of any GOP lawmakers playing a role in the Capitol insurrection. I don't know of any. We're here and open for the investigation. And if people are culpable, they need to be, uh, th th justice needs to prevail in that regard. But a report from a Democrat-led Senate panel says Trump allies, including Perry, have particularly notable ties to January 6th. And these ties warrant further investigation. How does the president incite an attack that was pre-planned and already underway before his speech concluded. And the House Select Committee investigating January 6th wants phone records of several lawmakers, including Perry. I'm Jeff Clark. Perry has admitted introducing Trump to Jeffrey Clark, who led the Justice Department's civil division. Clark tried and failed to press other top DOJ officials to announce election fraud investigations in battleground states and attempted a near coup of Justice Department leadership. Jeffrey Clark became Donald Trump's big lie lawyer. The same day Trump told DOJ officials to just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. Stop the steal! Stop the steal! Trump dispatched Perry to convince Donahue the election had been stolen. Perry called Donahue. POTUS asked him to call, according to notes Donahue provided to the Senate panel. According to Donahue, Perry talked up Clark, effectively saying, Jeff Clark is great. He's the kind of guy who could really get in there and do something about this and asked for Donahue's email, saying, can I send you stuff? We've got a lot of evidence. He sent a document of debunked claims like this one. Over 205,000 more votes were cast in Pennsylvania than people who voted in the November election. Claims Perry clung to as he objected to the 2020 election results just hours after rioters stormed the U.S. Capitol. Sadly, but resolutely, I object to the electoral votes of my beloved Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. An objection he still stands by as he continues to cast doubts on the election. Would you vote the same way now? I absolutely would. It's not about President Trump. It's not about President Biden. It's about the process. Now, it's unclear if the House Select Committee is going to want to talk to Scott Perry. My colleague Ryan Nobles caught up with him on the Hill yesterday. Perry said he doesn't like to talk to CNN, Brianna. Hmm. Okay, Perry introduced Trump to Jeffrey Clark. How did Perry know Jeffrey Clark? This is a big, outstanding mystery. We've asked Perry's office multiple times. They have not responded to our questions. Even in these reports, these DOJ officials say it was never clear how this congressman from Pennsylvania had this relationship with Jeffrey Clark, how he came to facilitate introductions to President Trump and even an Oval Office meeting with Clark and Trump in it. Hmm, something that would be nice to find out. Nice to know. All right, Sarah Murray, great report. Thank you. If only there were a committee investigating this. Donald Trump continues to push lies about the election that Joe Biden won. Some of his biggest supporters are taking a slightly different, yet no less duplicitous approach. Here's Republican House Minority Leader, uh, minority Whip Steve Scalise refusing to answer the simple question, does he believe the election was stolen? I hope we get back to what the Constitution says, but clearly in a number of states, they didn't follow those legislatively. So you think rules. the election was so I, I, stolen? What I said is there are states that didn't follow their legislatively set rules. That's what the United States Constitution says. Do you think the election, not uh, last time, I promise, do you think the election was stolen or not? I understand you think there were irregularities and things that need to be fixed. Do you think the election was stolen? Yeah. And it's not just irregular. It's states that did not follow the laws set, which the Constitution says they're supposed to follow. It's not a trick question. It's a basic foundational question, and the answer is no. Joining me now, CNN reporter and resident fact-checker Daniel Dale. You see 
in the answer that Scalise is giving, and there are others now giving that same answer, something is potentially dangerous as the outright lies that Donald Trump is spreading. That's right, John. I, I think Congressman Scalise and many of his colleagues have been playing a kind of double game for months now. On one hand, they avoid the mockery and scrutiny that comes with going full conspiracy theorist, sounding like Donald Trump or Mike Lindell, you know, talking about the servers and the routers and the dead people voting, explicitly saying the election was stolen. What he's doing is, as you heard, declining politely to say to, to, to say that it wasn't stolen and offering this kind of legalistic explanation about states not following their own rules or laws. And by doing that, he avoids the, the wrath of Donald Trump and the millions of supporters who subscribe to this lie. Um, while also achieving the same ends as Trump is looking for, which is to delegitimize Joe Biden, the current president, who who won fair and square. And so th this kind of double game, this this kind of polite evasion works clearly for Congressman Scalise, but, but it does not work for American democracy. Uh, also, it's not like the courts didn't weigh in on the argument that Scalise is making. Yeah, o over and over, uh, Republicans, uh, Trump's legal team and their allies put forward these arguments about states not abiding by their own election laws. No court, uh, as we know, uh, endorsed the argument that Joe Biden won because any state violated its rules. Some states, ex uh, some courts explicitly weighed in on the merits of these cases, ruling that what the states were doing are fine. And so th this this is done, John. We're, we're so far beyond this. Uh, and yet it, it lives because people like Congress and Scalise are unwilling to, to put it to death uh, like it should be. Does more than lives, it festers. I mean, what's the long-term impact of this level of deception? I, I, I think that th this is as toxic as Donald Trump's own lies. I mean, we know that Trump is the main driver of this. He has the biggest megaphone. But the, 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 the reason that it's not treated as a complete joke uh, by American society is that a Republican conservative media and Republican congressmen and women, including the leadership, are unwilling to say that it's a joke. Of course, some people would still believe it if if they did, but it would not it would not be a, a, a mainstream accepted thing if people like Congressman Scalise were willing to to reject it, laugh at it, scoff at it. And so I, I think, it, as we saw during uh, former President Trump's presidency, the the enabling, the complicity, is as toxic as the lies themselves. Daniel Dale, we appreciate you and your work. Thank you very much. Thank you.